G'day guys, uh, Mike Klingler, my business partner, is going to show you an overview of our complete funnel and how we can provide not just a service, but how you can join with us in a great opportunity to scale over those scary walls that you may have. So no further ado, I'll pass you over to Mike and he can share all about my daily choice, Hempworks, and how you can be duplicating with us and how we can help you and provide you uh, for your family and uh, not just fly in the sky to learn now. All right, welcome again. Let me start with the first slide. Looks like we're way down at the bottom for some reason. Okay, so let's just start from where I know some of you are at. <laughs> You're looking at a big scary wall. Every time you come across something in this process that you don't know how to overcome, it looks insurmountable for some of you. And I, we really need to reframe that. Like, it's not. It's like, it looks scary sometimes. Like, for example, you you know, for some of you, you send a few emails out, you don't get any pre-enrollees, and it's almost like, oh, here we go again. It, you know, it's working for other people, but it's not going to work for me. You know, you're looking at this wall that you think you can't climb, and it's just BS. Where this uh, young woman is, right, you see she's about a foot and a half off the ground. <laughs> to put this in perspective, that's like a significant income with this opportunity. And from my eyes, and I'm really going to try through this process to, you know, we're going to get real concrete and specific, guys. I won't be all esoteric with this open, like I am with this opening. But I want you to kind of challenge your own mindset from time to time. If it's, if it's, if it's presenting to you like a wall that looks insurmountable and you're starting to think, oh, here I go again. It's another opportunity others are successful with, but I can't be. That's not what's going on. I'm giving you play by play, email by email every single little thing you got to do. And, 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 and I'm going to be encourage you guys to look at this through my eyes whenever you think you're looking at a wall. From, from my eyes, this young lady who's about a foot and a half on that wall, that's about how challenging it is. Once you understand everything that we're going to go through, that's about how challenging it is to get to a pretty significant residual income from my perspective. I want you to understand it's safe. <laughs> yeah, that's why I chose a picture of a pregnant <laughs> woman climbing the wall. It's very safe here. You're gonna have a harness. Like you, there's literally nothing that, that's scary or that's bad that can happen to you. You can't lose tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars here. It can't happen. It just can't. There's nothing in the model that is, makes it even possible for that to happen. There is nothing scary. Worst case scenario is you get good at marketing and make some money. Like there's literally no way that you can't have success here and there's no way you can get injured or anything. It's just keep that in mind. Uh, and I, I know this is a little repeat for those of you who were here before I hit the record button, but let's remember, and because I know not everybody has worked with me on other projects and so forth. So, you know, let's remember where the information I'm sharing with you is coming from. It's coming from this being obviously easy for me. And it's not because I'm getting on the phone and doing like slick sales stuff. It's not because I'm a celebrity personality who's awesome on video. I'm not. I don't like to do production. I don't like to be in video. It's because, well, as I was saying before we hit record, there's a lot of variables that have come together to make this particular opportunity extraordinarily easy if you just know a few basic things, like how to present good information, I'm giving you the same presentations I use. 99% uh, of the people that have enrolled with me, I never spoke to. So we know it's duplicatable. It's all through emails I'm giving you. So keep in perspective that the emails I'm sending, the presentations we're sending them to are clearly effective. 214 enrollments my first month in December. Uh, what and then I, I I've been spending most of my time, guys, not on that. 
Yeah, we got hey guys, make sure you keep yourselves on mute. We're going to have to switch to a, a different style of these uh, Zoom calls, so that can't happen, but uh, do your best to, to not accidentally unmute yourself. So I just want you to keep it all in perspective that, you know, the emails I'm sending out, the presentations, all this that you're using, it's creating these ridiculous results. What was this, February? And we got, uh, I got 49 enrollments. This is with me spending the majority of my time creating the systems and the presentations and organizing the emails for you guys, not focused on this. It's very high leveraging, but there are certain things you, you have to know how to do. Like I'm giving you the emails and stuff we're going to talk about today is yeah, it's more nuanced than that. Like I can give you the emails and give you exactly what to send and all this stuff. They give you the same marketing funnels, marketing presentations. But what I'm going to show you today is it's to, to convert pre enrollees into directors and executives who duplicate and that get it, it's, it's more than just having the presentations and emails, obviously. You know, so what is it? Well, today I'm gonna to show you exactly what it is and it's gonna require some more coaching. That's what I mean by like, there's a wall to climb for sure. You guys have a little wall to climb, but you're gonna have a harness throughout the process. We're gonna to continue to reinforce what I'm sharing with you today until you got it. We'll get to the point, as soon as I get all the, pre, the emails for you to send to pre-enrollees organized, so you know, again, I'm going over all this today. As soon as you have that in your hands, we'll be doing a lot of interactive calls where if you're not converting, like I'll look and see what you're sending and go, oh, well, that's because you did this and that you're sending this one and this one and this one. And remember, you're not supposed to send them in that order. What this is basically about, guys, is we're building a relationship with the list. So you don't have to build the relationships with the woman at the grocery store counter or, um, you know, or the, the nurse or, you know, throughout you're the pharmacist. Uh, I'm not saying don't do those things. As you get results on the products, obviously share them. Yes, of course. And as we go down this road, that will become more and more an emphasis. Like a couple of years from now, that'll be a lot of our systems. Right now, we're laying the groundwork to build a really huge organization of business opportunity seekers because it's such a unique opportunity getting in front of what's happening. But I'm not saying don't do those things. I'm not saying don't build relationships outside of what we're doing. I'm just saying that this is so much more higher leveraging as an emphasis, particularly right now. But you're still building a relationship. It's just higher leveraging. And what I'm getting at is if it's canned, if it's contrived, uh, if your list, if the people on the receiving end, your future friends, these future people who are going to be giving you a high five because they're making all this money three years from now and you're meeting them at an event, these people that are on the receiving end that are in that list, they're people. And if you don't understand what I'm teaching you today and which I'll continue reinforcing, which is like when you send what and you're not thinking about their experience and that the emails that you send depend on your situation. For example, if you have one person in your team line, one pre-enrollee versus 300, the exact email you choose to send that I give you is different. Or if yesterday you sent an email and you made a mistake and you accidentally sent the wrong one and it made no sense because you act, you were in a hurry and you grabbed the wrong email, Today, what you send matters, <laughs> right? Like, if you sent something like, if you grabbed the wrong email today, listen very carefully to what I'm saying here. It's so important. It's like everything I'm giving you is so easy. I'm giving you everything, but if you don't understand this side of it, like, you're not gonna, you're not gonna do good with it. And it should just make sense. If yesterday you were in a hurry and you grabbed the wrong email and you sent it out, let's say you grabbed the one for whatever reason, it happens. You grab the email that I gave you that says you have three people that are jumping above you. You need to act right now. And then you realize, oh, no, like I didn't mean to send that email. They don't have anyone jumping them. Like if you don't address that the next day and, the, you know, it's not going to happen a lot, but you will make mistakes. The other day I shared that I sent out an email. And at the bottom, I didn't, I didn't sign my name. I forgot to replace where it says signed your name. At the end of the email, I should have put Mike, but it was still your name. Like, I can't just ignore that. 
the next day I emailed my, emailed my list and the subject line I said, why I signed yesterday's email your name or something like that. I actually got like a huge open rate. These are real people paying attention. And if you're not paying attention to them as real people and you're sending the wrong emails and then, or you're, or you're like not following the strategy I'm going to go over today, you're not going to get the crazy results. And doesn't it just make sense? So that's what today is about. And that's what from this day forward will be about. For those of you that have a lot of pre-enrollees, that's what it's going to be about. Now, before I even get into this, I know some of you are still getting pre-enrollees or you started to get pre-enrollees and you're still struggling with your mindset. So I promise this won't just be a big long call on mindset. And I think you guys that have been around me a while know that when I address the mindset issue, I address it very differently than just the esoteric abstract stuff. And this is an example of what I mean. And Rainer, if you're listening to this, uh, not beating up on you at all, it just happens to be a great example to what I'm speaking to here. So I appreciate any of you ever if I use you as an example you know in teaching mindset and maybe it doesn't feel like it's in a positive light it's it it is a contribution on your end we thank you for it it's a hundred percent okay like understand it's not a negative at all we have to hold each other accountable to a high standard or we're not going to reach high levels of success it's that way in political teams sports teams and certainly in network marketing teams business teams across the board, high standards across the board. And this actually transcends that. Uh, this is even digging deeper into encouraging you guys to start looking at everything here through my eyes, borrow my perspective, because if you start asking yourself, how would Mike look at this before you respond in your mind to something, a challenge or what's happening, or when you're analyzing information, and I'll show you what I mean by that. Like some of you are sending emails and you're drawing conclusions already. Instead of drawing conclusions just quickly, instead ask yourself, how might Mike look at this? And I think you're gonna slow down and start to look at what's going on a lot differently and make a lot better decisions if you do that. Let me give you some examples. We're gonna get really specific today, guys, so hang with me. I just wanted to begin with this because if your mindset's all wrong and if you're jumping to conclusions with the results you're getting or lack of results short term that you're getting, if you're jumping to conclusions and you're not approaching this the way I'm teaching you, uh, it can really screw you up. I mean, and then you just, you drop out or you lose faith before you even got started. It's just silly. You got to be careful with that. So let me go through this and then we're going to move into specific concrete stuff with how to convert pre-enrollees into directors, executives on auto order who are duplicating. So I made this post that says, those of you in HempWorks My Daily Choice team are invited to attend a live interactive session tomorrow. And I was inviting people here and, uh, and I was saying, hey, like, you can come and learn on this call that I'm on right now, how to convert pre-enrollees into, you know, duplicating committed business builders. And Rainer wrote in, the main challenge remains. So I just want to point out, first notice that Rainer is really committed to his perspective as if he has years of experience doing this. Doing this meaning making huge sums of money, building relationships with people, uh, inspiring people, moving them forward with an opportunity or something. Now, I don't think Rainer has that experience. And so, Rainer, my challenge to you is to start flipping the script and before you jump to conclusions and start projecting that, before you have a conclusion, I'm speaking to all of you here as well, start to ask yourself, how might I be looking at it? Because obviously I look at it differently and how I look at all of this has everything to do with the results that I get. <laughs> and it will for you too. Anyway, he said in a very committed tone, the main challenge remains how to attract pre-enrollees as the one cent leads after 10 days may not reach the audience open enough to look at the opportunity before them and which is described in Michael's emails to the point, I'm not sure what he means at the end, but you guys get the kind of point. So I, I think maybe Rainer either hasn't gotten a lot of pre-enrollees yet or perhaps he's gotten some, but they haven't responded to the opportunity. 
it's a very quick, that's a very strong opinion way too early with these leads. And it also isn't taking into account everything that's happening. So now let's look at my response to kind of move you into what I mean by a paradigm shift with the same stuff going on. So I wrote, I have three enrollments in three weeks with them, with these leads. Because we're early, I mentioned to you guys, we tested these, got phenomenal results for really inexpensive, it's extremely duplicatable, so we're testing them as a community now. That's how we will roll always. We test something that gets phenomenal results, I'll share it with you if it's really insanely good results, I'll be emphatic about it, it won't happen a lot. This one definitely did, and we'll start, for those who want to, we will test it as a community, which basically we're always testing and marketing, so that's just how we will always roll. But uh, if you come in and you don't have a lot of experience with success with leads and emails and so forth, 10 days into it, it's probably something you're doing, or it could just be the, the bad luck of the draw and you just need to go a little bit longer, like way too early. But uh, as I mentioned, I've got three enrollments in three weeks with these leads. Sending emails I am giving to everyone who wants to duplicate. Uh, the challenge is doing that, and it's the easiest challenge I've ever seen. Completely different perspective. Now, Teresa comes in. Mike, I'm thinking perhaps it may be emails going to their junk spam folders. I'm using a Gmail email address as I haven't got myself a personal one as yet, but unsure as to how often that will get seen as spam. So, I mean, not a bad question, but again, way too early to really assess in any serious way that that's any kind of serious variable. It, it could be for Teresa, but it's just way too early to really even be thinking about that. Now, we do have more training to do, which we're gonna get into at this in this next chapter, right? We're moving into now with all of this, with your converting pre-enrollees into enrollments, where you are gonna get into training about what's the best way to send the emails out. But it's just a little too early yet you know, for at least for me to be looking at that. Now, we're going to come to the point where I'll be doing interactive calls. I'll be looking at Teresa's, you know, if she's having an issue, thinking that that's an issue, they're not getting them, we'll look closely at it. But we're just not quite there yet. It, we need to get the main macro infrastructure in place. I need to get all these emails out to you. I need you to understand how to use them. So it may or may not be an issue, Teresa, and I just, I'm not quite at the point yet where I can help you individually find that out, but I'm not sure I'd be too concerned about it. What I would suggest is to ask the community how they're sending their emails and see if you can kind of model what they're doing and just know we'll come in behind you here soon. Uh, now, here's my response to Teresa. Again, mindset shift. Uh, I said definitely not that, meaning if she was responding to Rainer's point, uh, and thinking that deliverability rates an issue system wide or something, it's definitely not the case. I send more emails than anyone here, so my emails end up in more junk folders than anyone's. So I can tell you that pretty much de as a definite fact, my emails have a harder time making it through someone's inbox than most of yours, if not all of yours, because I send so many emails, and that's what the outcome of that will be. It's, so I'm just, I want people to really understand what it really is all about, which is gonna be what this call is about. It's what you email. That's what impacts results most. Because again, my stuff ends up in junk folders all the time. And I'll hear people in the community talking a lot about that being a major issue. And it's like, yeah, it's an issue you want to uh, reduce, but I have so many of my emails ending up in junk folders and I'm getting such amazing results. I even got amazing results with the one cent lead, sending to tiny little lists just like everyone else. So it's not that I have a big list that makes the difference. It's what you email, when, because just to be, put this in perspective, guys, I have somewhere around 30 pre-enrollees in my first three weeks of using the one cent leads with three people signing up. Uh, one of them at executive, one of them at director, and one of them at zero BV that I still need to follow up with and see if I can get them to upgrade. The other one that, that enrolled at executive had come in at zero BV too. Uh, that's phenomenal for, I spent, you know, almost nothing. So it's what you email, when you email it, what you email after what you just emailed. <laughs> so you emailed something and then what do you send next? 
again, I'm giving you the emails, but you didn't know which ones to send. And that's what we're going to talk about today because it depends on the circumstances. How much time has passed between the emails, depending on the purpose of the email, <laughs> we are talking about relationship building. At some point, it will become natural for you and not need to be so calculated. And since I'm giving everyone the same emails I send, and since my emails are so consistently effective, even though they end up in junk spam folders because I email so much, I'm 100% confident that you merely need to learn how to build a relationship with your list as I do. Since you get to use the same emails I use and you have my mentoring on the nuances, I don't think you'll find an easier challenge to tackle with a great, greater reward, reward or return. You're building a relationship with your list. And I talked about on today's call, that's what I'm going to be talking about. And that's what it's really all gonna come down to. You're using the same emails and everything. It's, and in some cases where like, it might not be the exact same email, it's, it's basically the same thing. You're, maybe you choose to build the relationship instead of me building the relationship. We'll talk about that. But I can assure you that it's about building the relationship with the list and you're getting to use the same emails I'm using. I mean, you literally could use the exact same ones if you wanted to. I'm gonna suggest you guys use ones that I give you that have been tweaked a little bit uh, so that you're building a relationship because then you can make a lot more money in the long run because they're getting to know you. And as we grow and compound, you building the relationship with them too, don't have to, could have just me build the relationship with them with those emails. But if you're building the relationship with them too, then uh, one year out, two year out, three years out, you're making 10, 20, 30 times as much. So instead of making, you know, maybe making 5,000 a month, you're making 30,000 a month if you're building the relationship. Uh, so, but you could do either. If you're not ready to build the relationship and you just want to just have it all be me, you can do that. You absolutely can do it. And it will work because it's the same email, same everything I'm doing. It's just as you grow, you're limited in how much you're able to lead a growing team. Uh, and so it will limit your income long term. Todd writes, hey, Mike, I just noticed that the following email is not in your HempWorks email marketing on FireDoc. This is actually uh, the one that has given me the best open and click through rates. And he, he shared which one it was. I responded, uh, thanks, Todd. And I, and I appreciate him sharing that. He goes, yeah, I think there are still a few that didn't make it on there. I focused on the ones I got best results with. But as we test more, the long-term results will reveal themselves. And then I added, I said, I've added this one to the document as 5D. Thanks again. So this is going to continue to happen. I'm continually adding to the emails that you can send out based on the responses I'm hearing back. The initial ones I put on there were just the ones I got the best responses with. I haven't had time to scour the Google sheet and what everyone's reported. We're going to get there. And, uh, it, you know, it takes time, guys. This is how marketers live. We just kind of start promoting and growing, and when we're navigating and we're looking at the data, and then Todd, you know, tells me, "Hey, here's an email that worked for me." That you know, I had actually shared this one, but I had never uh, tested it thoroughly. He said it's working for me, so I go ahead and stick it on the list, and then we'll keep watching the data. We'll keep keep watching the stats, and over time, we learn more and more which emails get the best results. So it's like, you gotta understand that it's a work in progress. It will always be moving, but as a team, it will always be improving. This is how marketers, they find a trail and then they're on the scent and then they get closer and closer and closer and closer and it just gets better and better and better and better. But you gotta give it time to do that. Like some people are like already forming strong opinions at 10 days into it when they've never had success before in a, on a large scale with this model. It's like it's way too early. To, that's not what you, we're doing here. We're testing a lead source as a community. And we're contributing like Todd did to that process. And it's inevitable that you will succeed if you follow the trail. And since you have a guide, myself, who's clearly gotten results, that's what you lean into. It's an unprecedented situation. Uh, another example of that, I wrote 72 clicks on this one. Uh, I was sending to the one cent leads. I made a slight tweak to the email. I uh, got crazy number of clicks and I shared what it was. So I shared that in the community and someone made a comment, use this one verbatim 
on March 9th, only 104 clicks, but just picked up another pre-enrollee. We are still in the very early stages of testing this lead source. The results I'm seeing, these kinds of results are insane for the price and for the simplicity and ease of duplication so that people coming in, no matter how broke they may be, no matter how tech challenged they may be, can be duplicating within the first hour. It's incredible. And for as long as it's getting anything close to this, we will stick with it. Regardless of what any one individual is seeing or not seeing, this is incredible. We are testing lead sources at least 90, uh, 90 days uh, out if we see decent or better results. So we don't really judge this too heavily. If we're seeing decent, this is way better than decent results so far, but if we're seeing even decent results with a lead source, if, if I share something with you as a community and there will be more, that you you know that you can choose from. If you're in level if you're in level one, there won't be more, uh, but unless this one ever dries out and we'll replace it with the next best one or another good a better one if we find it. I doubt we will, but uh, but if you're at level two or level three, we'll have more costly lead sources that we'll be testing as a community that might offer uh, you know higher leverage because you can get a lot more of them or something like that. If we choose to test a lead source because we're seeing decent or better than decent results. We really enter into it as a community knowing we're going to test this out for about 90 days unless we stop seeing even decent results. But as a community, we're seeing way better than decent results with this. That's how you think about it. Uh, Gaber at, uh, wrote, got my first pre-enrollee and he just got started. I don't know what day, but really, really recently. But he registered with a fake email. Bummer. So it's not a bummer. I, you know, again, how would Mike think about this? Never a bummer. <laughs> Trust me, there's much bigger bummers than that, and they're not even bummers. Like, there, there's no bummers. Uh, we are following a trail. Every clue is a win. Uh, sometimes we can uh, defer a lot from a clue, and sometimes we're not sure. We pick it up, we look at it, we put it back down, we put it in our pocket, we might think about it later. We might uh, meet up about it later and talk about it, but we don't really form too quick of decisions. And I just want you guys to understand that I never look at any of it as a bummer, and I think it's why I'm so successful at this. And I really encourage you not to look at anything as a bummer either, it's a clue. Now, as I had written to him, did I, did I mention this? Okay, well, I just wanted you to ask yourself, how would I look at this? For example, in this example, uh, I had someone enroll at executive the other day, come to learn that they had entered in an email address that was a bad email. And it was just a mistake they made. They had entered it in wrong, I think. Maybe they did it on purpose, I don't know. They, not long after they enrolled as executive, so they were somehow still getting emails, you know, but the one they registered into HempWorks lead capture page was a bad email. So I don't know how he would know if it was a fake email, if it was intentional, maybe it was, but we don't really know and it doesn't really matter because in this case, if you're emailing the one cent leads, you have the person's real email address. They'll keep getting your follow-up emails, which is what happened with this person that you know, I got who entered in a bad email into the HempWorks lead capture page who later upgraded to at executive. And that's, that's the only time I learned it was a bad email because I tried to contact them with the email address that I had and it, was, it, it didn't go through because the one they'd entered into HempWorks was not right. And then they followed up and said, oh, it's, that's, not, that's not the right email. This is a good email. It, it doesn't really mean anything. So be careful where you go with your opinions about the clues. Ask yourself how I might think of something when something is happening that doesn't make you jump for joy. Uh, I think you'll find the way I look at it is not just more empowering and more exciting because I'm choosing that. It's more than just personal development stuff. Uh, it's literally a fact <laughs> that it doesn't matter if someone enters in a fake email. It doesn't really mean anything. Uh, and there's lots of things like that that you think matter that probably don't. So ask yourself how I might think about it. And I think over time, 
that's going to speed up significantly you thinking about the things that are happening and the clues that you're getting in a way that's a lot more close to reality and that therefore is a lot more empowering and helpful. Aaron writes, just an FYI on MLGS, the one cent leads, I just got my first pre-enrollee after sending 400 leads on 3-4. I had not chosen the perfect timing option until this batch. These were leads 1,000 to 1,400, and I got six hits and one pre-enrollee in HempWorks. The most hits I had gotten until this blast was five on February 20th, and this is my first pre-enrollee since I started to use MLGS. I am going to continue to test using the perfect timing option since this seems to make a difference. Okay, so I just want to caution you. It may or may not make a difference. I haven't collected or seen enough information to know that for sure. Just so you guys know, when I test perfect timing, I get worse results. I hear from others when they use perfect timing, they get better results. If you look at this like I do, you don't really deduce much from it yet, and we really don't need to. We just continue to look at clues and move forward and get pre-enrollees and now move into the next chapter of learning how to convert those into enrollments. And if you're not getting a lot of pre-enrollees yet, you learn from others in the community that seem to be doing really well, because some people are, and you find out what they're sending out and all the little details, what time of day are they using perfect timing? There's a lot more stuff for us to figure out, but all in all, collectively, phenomenal results. I want to caution you about forming too quick of an opinion or judgment about something uh, just because you're seeing the trend short term. It takes a lot longer to really be able to figure out is it just the luck of the draw, just the way, you know, just a short term trend that doesn't really have to do with the bigger reality. You know, it takes time to form these decisions. Look at the clues and test. Uh, Aaron can continue to test, but I wouldn't form that opinion yet. It could very well be true. But again, when I test perfect timing, so far I've gotten worse results, so I, but I've seen plenty of others get the opposite. So I don't know what it means just yet. Tarja writes, I've used perfect timing for most of mine and usually have gotten pre-enrollees. Carol writes, Aaron, just getting started on sending MLGS leads, sent 200 leads using the perfect timing and had 45 hits, 38 clicks, and one pre-enrollee. Maybe the perfect timing does work. Only time will tell. And I just want to underscore only time will tell. And absolutely test it. Test your theories, but be careful about how quick you, you come to conclusions about anything this early in the game when we're testing something. So important, guys. I'm, I'm, I'm giving you the perspective of how to approach marketing where you're guaranteed to win versus kind of a gambler mindset where you roll the dice a few times at the table, you have like a, a bad streak, and so, you know, you lose. Uh, we're not gambling, we're doing it like the house, the casino does it. We're looking at longer term trends and setting things up where we, ha we there's no way we can't lose. It's a completely different approach to it. Uh, it's all about how you look at it. Don't be too quick to come to conclusions. Don't look at it that way. Don't look for the quick hit. Like look at it, ask yourself, how might I approach it? How might I look at it? And I think that's gonna help speed up you looking at it closer to a way that will uh, benefit you tremendously and not in a way that's disempowering or leading you to conclusions way too fast that, that are not on target. Uh, pa Pamela writes reporting in low open rate, 8% and clicks, but two pre enrollees in 48 hours on this one. And she shares. So this is really helpful. And I really encourage you guys to share with each other. And by the way, those of you who do share, knowledge like this like she's sharing which one worked for her uh people that consistently do that when you have a question or something you're going to find you know there's lots of people willing to answer your questions i've noticed others in the community who never contribute not just in this community but in others who uh, ask a question and no one ever answers them and it's because that person never contributes anything it really matters so thank you, Pamela, for contributing that. And I've seen others contribute. Uh, that is going to pay dividends. And it's really what this community is all about. Michelle writes, just got this email. What? What? This is amazing. You have a new lead. So Michelle comes in on March 7th. And I think that was the first day she started. And she gets a pre-enrollee. And then she got a couple more. And I don't have all of her, you know, her exciting posts about it but then again yesterday because what was that last one march 7th 
And I think there was more in between. And there was one yesterday, another lead just came into my tree. Then Deborah down here, yay, me too, from unknown source, so it must be MLGS, which is the one sent leads. And then Michelle writes, uh, today, didn't get an email from corporate yet to notify her of the pre-enrollee, uh, but I got another pre-enrollee in my tree. You know, these are all from the one sent leads. So she just came in and she's gotten at least three pre-enrollees and maybe more now. And I mean, three is plenty in that short of a time uh, to underscore how good these leads are. And I just want to underscore that I've noticed that people who get excited and are really positive about what's happening <laughs> tend to do better, a lot better. It's kind of wild. And, and so why might that be? There's subtle things that if you were to look at it from a logical, pragmatic perspective, there are subtle things that I'm sure if I were to look over their shoulder and look over the shoulder of the little bit more negative person, I would see exactly what they're doing differently. Uh, be, I, but I, I could just say just across the board that if you are excited about the little things that are happening and you're celebrating those, within yourself and with others, you're probably listening more, you're probably more active, you're probably more in tune with what's going on. And I think that impacts tremendously, though subtly, the actual result difference is significant. And it's just something I'd like you guys to think about because I keep seeing it. And if you pay attention in the community, you're gonna notice it too. Uh, I was writing Michelle and I said, how many pre-enrollees is that now? And when was your first day sending? Okay, so she's gotten three. So her first day, I, I thought maybe she got more than that because I kept seeing her post with the excitement, which is awesome, but she's just gotten the three. But that's a lot, that's a lot with the in inexpensive lead source. She just, uh, her first day was on the 7th and what's today, the 11th. So really only time for three emails to these inexpensive leads. And more could easily come even from those still. My first day was 3-7 and I have three employees. Uh, something I wanted you to, I, you know, before we really dig in here, because this starts to open up like another level you can choose to participate in that you don't have to. But remember I was talking earlier about building a relationship with your list as opposed to just, you know, using my emails exactly and everything that I do exactly as I do it, where you're helping me build a relationship with your list and you can leverage the system and, and everything exactly what I do and get results. Absolutely. But remember what I was saying, where if you build a relationship on top of that, you're going to make so much more money as the months and years go on. Uh, and that's what this is about. I said, Michelle, you should do a training video showing exactly what email you're sending, what lead capture page you're linking to what time of day you sent these, if you chose perfect timing or no, and the subtle impact of having a positive attitude and how that might influence results. If you posted it to YouTube, if she went over all of that and posted it to YouTube and shared it with our community, but also posted it to YouTube and shared a little context, like, you know, on our YouTube video saying, hey, I'm working with this team and Hemp Works. I swear it got started with these really inexpensive leads and I've already gotten three pre-enrollees in just a couple of days. So I wanted to share with you like what I'm doing here because that's pretty awesome. So, it, and put your links under the video so she could put a link to the purchase of leads. She could put her link into her Hemp Works uh, lead capture page saying, hey, if you want to join a winning team, uh, opt in here. You could get signups into MLGS from outside our group, which doubles your leads per day. When you get someone signing up into MLGS, MLGS the one cent leads, they give you double. And it also starts paying income, affiliate commissions that she could then put into marketing for faster growth. This is how Mike thinks. This is where my mind always goes. I leverage everything. And, other, you know, like she has these little early results. Go share it. It's real. It's happening. Go share it. And then that will bring more results and it will bring more money to put into more marketing, which will bring more results. I go into others who have been researching uh, how to, uh, who want to join HempWorks. There's people out there like some of your best prospects who are hot prospects can also come in through your lead capture page that way from that video. And it just keeps on working for you. It could get results this week, next week, next month, three months from now, five months from now. I go, it's not a required step. But if you did this and made it a habit, wherever you could, you definitely attract a lot from it. Leverage everything. 
Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and move into the main point of today. You know, those things that I was just sharing with you is, well, I covered a lot of things, right? You know, mindset, try to look at things through the eyes of a successful marketer and not an unsuccessful marketer. Uh, whenever a challenge presents itself or you think something bad happened, if you think about it from the eyes of a successful marketer, you realize it's just a clue. Like we don't think of it that way. And it has a big difference in our results and what we do. Be careful about jumping to conclusions too quickly. And, uh, you know, share positive results that you're having in the community. And that will come back to you tenfold. Okay, so this is my left and right leg. You'll notice yeah, I took a snapshot yesterday and I said, oh, my goodness, we are seeing a huge surge across the community in pre-enrollees. And I have 780 this month. This is just this month. It's only the 11th. Or yesterday was the 10th. 780 in the left leg and 543 in the right leg. And I, was, I shared that with you guys in the community. I was like, this is nuts. And I reminded you, because I have not seen anything like this. We've only had 17. And yes, as of yesterday, 780 pre-enrollees in the left leg and only 17 signups this month. And in the right leg, 543 pre-enrollees uh, this month and only 19 signups. And I say only uh, just to underscore what's going on here, it's not, it's not a bad thing at all. I wanna point out that earlier in development of the business, uh, the percentage was really high of new affiliates to signups. But it makes sense that we're gonna see a surge and pre-enrollees, and there would be a delay before we saw a surge in new affiliates. And so this is actually very exciting because we have to pass through this phase. We have to pass through the phase where everybody is getting a lot of pre-enrollees, or I know not all of you were there yet, but obviously uh, if you keep moving, you will be. This is a step that we had to pass through to get to the next step. We've, we haven't really focused on how to convert pre-enrollees into enrollments. Today's the first time that we've done that. So this is a really positive sign and check this out. That, you know, that was um, yesterday, here's today. <laughs> to show just how insane this is, like how fast it's growing. Left leg, 780 pre-enrollees was yesterday, right? And 543 on the right side. Today, 928 on the left side, 593 on the right. So in, again, in order to move through a huge growth in new enrollments, new directors, new executives, duplicating the process, we first have to move through huge growth of pre-enrollees as a community. And by the way, even if you're not there yet, like if you're on the team that's doing it, between the spillover from above you and the, and the, and the, and the action below you, like it's a winning situation for everybody. But we have to move through that step first. We had to get to the point where you guys were getting massive pre-enrollees as a community collectively before we can move to the next step, which is where we're at right now in the point of today. Okay, so remember I said, like, I'm giving you every email. I'm giving you everything uh, that has created these incredible results for me in terms of converting pre-enrollees into directors and executives. Uh, but remember I said it's much more nuanced than that. And today is the start of that training. I just want you to remember as nuanced as this gets and as much as your head might spin at first, I want you to remember I'm, I'm going to give you the archive of every possible email you need to send. So that should bring a lot of comfort. That's your harness. So you can climb this wall without the risk of writing bad emails or whatever. Like you can't make that mistake. But you do need to learn these kinds of things, like what you send on Friday <laughs> of the leads, I, of the emails I give you. Some of them are great for Friday and some of them aren't. And you're going to have to learn that because we're building relationships. And when you're building a relationship with a person one on one that you meet at the coffee shop, who may later become a friend or whatever, when you're meeting somebody out there and it's turning into a relationship, there's spontaneity in the discussion. If they felt that you were rehearsing, reciting words that you received from somebody about how to build a relationship, it would come off really, really weird. And even though there's a lot of protection that you have 
through email where it's harder for them to pick that up. In the ways that I'm going to go over with you right now, they still can pick that up. And that, is, that means all the difference. And I shared an example earlier. If you accidentally sent a mistake, made a mistake in emailing like I did the other day where I sent an email out and I left it signed your name, literally the words your name instead of saying Mike. If I just ignore that, I'm not going to say it's going to like permanently damage my reputation with the list, but it definitely, you know, uh, have, if I don't address it, it definitely is an issue. That kind of stuff. Or if on Friday, I'm like hyping up the excitement around the team line. If I send out an email, hi, I'm going to go over this concretely in a minute. I just want to set this up. If I were to like, hype up the excitement around the team line and, and how it works. After Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, I already did that. And I don't bring the energy down a little bit. It's just too much. Just like, you know, you could be, you meet someone early on in a relationship that's developing, whether it's a friendship or whatever, a courtship or whatever. Uh, there can be times where you're excited. You're excited about the relationship, even if it's a friendship. There can be times where you're excited about subjects you're talking about. You can get kind of hyper. Some personalities more this way than others. Uh, but there comes a point where if there's nothing else defining the interaction, it's overwhelming. There's times where maybe your voice needs to come down a little bit and it should be natural. If we're Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, hitting them hard with the excitement of the team line, it's like, okay, it's Friday. Let's relax a little bit. Let's shift the conversation somewhere else. This is really, really important. You're going to have all my emails, but if you're sending the hyped up ones all the time, it's not going to work. So these are the things you have to learn, and I promise you can learn them. And it's going to come to the point where if you commit to this, it won't take long at all, where it actually becomes so natural, you'll be writing your own emails a lot of times, and you won't think anything of it, because it will become a natural thing, because it really is ridiculously simple once you understand it. But we'll give you all the emails and we're even going to show you how to send which ones, know which ones to send, which ones not to send. We're going to make it so ridiculously paint by the numbers that you can't go wrong. Or at least you'll know when you did. And if you don't know when you did and if you're not getting the results, we'll even have sessions where I look at what you're doing and I'll be able to show you. There's no way you can't figure this out. So let's dig in. On Fridays, I suggest you send one email only. Other days, you might send more. Friday's the calm day. One email only. And by the way, for those of you who are wondering where automated emails come into play, we'll talk about that at the end of this. Just earmark that. On Fridays, you're going to send one email only with an occasional planned double whammy. What's a planned double whammy? A planned double whammy is when you send an email and then you purposefully, because this is a planned one, sometimes you have to do it as an emergency measure, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. But sometimes you plan a double whammy where you send another email right after you just sent one. It gets people's attention. You don't do it too much. You do it too much and it's not good for kind of obvious reasons. Just like wouldn't make sense. It's weird. But sometimes an email calls for a double whammy. And I'll, when I give you the emails, I'll mention that, like here's an email that really is a good one for a planned double whammy. Meaning you send this one and then you send this follow-up like two minutes later. Not something you always do, something you do from time to time to get people's attention because it works. For example, I might send a really important email, uh, important about let's some aspect of the opportunity and I really want them to get it or see it or get their attention on it. And so immediately two minutes later, I send another email, which I give you. This would be a planned double whammy because you intentionally do it this way to get their attention on it. And in the subject line, it says, oh, I forgot. 
So what happens is a whole bunch of emo are wondering what that is because it feels very candid, because it is, because you really did forget something. Now, in this case, we plan to forget it, <laughs> did not include it, but nonetheless, it's, there's a spontaneity in it with their experience. Again, if you do this too much, then it's weird, but every once in a while, it makes sense. Oh, I forgot. So a lot of people open that up. And then the email I give you in that second email, it's like really intriguing. Like they don't really know what's going on, but they feel like they're supposed to. And it makes them go look for that other email you just sent. Like I just sent you that email and I forgot to tell you, blah, blah, blah. And like, it's not salesy. It's assuming that they're paying friggin' attention. And by the way, one of the biggest mistakes people who fail in this model make that people who succeed don't make one of the biggest mistakes is like you keep writing to people or keep communicating to your list or audience or on Facebook, you keep communicating in a way where you're not assuming people are actually paying attention. But when you actually communicate in a way where you assume that they actually know what's going on and they actually do care, the style changes and the tone changes and you actually get them working to try to understand what you're saying and they don't feel like they're being sold to. So anyway, this is what happens when we send a planned double whammy. We send something that might be a little head heavy. Maybe it's about like how we know, you know, it's an email I give you. Maybe it's about how we know that HempWorks is entering into critical mass. Not the kind of, con you know, not the kind of conversation that a lot of people really dig their hooks into. So to make sure they pay attention, we send a follow-up two minutes later that says, oh, I forgot. So a whole bunch of people click on that. Some of them clicked on the other email and then didn't read it all because it felt heavy, thought they'd come back to it later, whatever. Now a whole bunch of people that did that click on this one and a whole bunch of people that didn't even open the other one click on this one. And now the way it's written, it's making them go look for that email and pay attention to it. Huge, huge strategy. Never heard it taught anywhere. Really, really effective for me. I'll be giving you the emails, but more importantly, I'm teaching you the simple strategy so you can duplicate my results. All these things matter. Give, uh, give depth. You can also say substance. Okay. So, okay. Well, let me back. What, I don't know where I just jumped to that one. So occasional double whammy on this one. Uh, otherwise it's one email on Friday and you know, maybe you don't have to overthink it, guys. Don't be over calculating. I know some, uh, we all have different personalities. I'm more intuitive um, and don't overthink stuff when it starts to feel heavy, uh, you know, when it comes to these kinds of things, when it comes to relational stuff. Uh, it, if you are more needing to calculate everything, then you can go ahead and think of it in these terms. Like, if you sent a plan double whammy out this Friday, don't send another one out for, you know, three Fridays from now, if you need that kind of structure. Uh, in the Friday emails, you're going to choose an email that either, it either does one of these things or sometimes it can do all of these things. And I'll give examples. And again, we're going to constantly reinforce all of this. So there's no way you can't learn this. But you're choosing from emails I already give you in these categories. You don't have to write the emails. Emails that have created phenomenal results for me. One of the categories of emails that you're going to get, educate on the products or opportunity. Different aspects of it. Might even link into a video that I gave you that you upload either to your YouTube channel or that you upload to a, a, a marketing page that we, we, we've created for you uh, with your link on it underneath. Some of the emails will do that. Some of them, they'll just talk a little bit in the email itself and then link back to the marketing page you already have. Uh, some of the emails that I give you that you get to choose from that you send on Friday, give depth or substance on another related subject. It, it could be some general topic about CB, the CBD market uh, and where it's going and that there's lots of different ones. It could be uh, an educational topic, you know, again, outside HempWorks, but, but related. It could be about the network marketing industry. It could be, you know, statistics there. Again, I'm giving you the emails. You don't need to think to be able to duplicate this. You're choosing on Friday to send one of these. Or you could choose to send uh, 
one of the emails I give you that reviews for them, what just happened? Like if there was a lot of excitement, if there was a lot of excitement uh, in your team line and you'd been sending a lot of emails, which we'll talk about on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, then you might send an email on Friday that, with the subject line, again, I'm giving you these emails, that says, what happened or what was that? And it's talking about like, if you're wondering what that big whirlwind was, again, you're just choosing from the emails. On Friday, these are the ones that you're choosing from. And then in smaller type here, it says, if you reviewed what just happened uh, last Friday, you wouldn't send it again this Friday. These are the things you gotta learn. You know, if you did this last Friday, if you sent an email that I gave you that reviewed what just happened that week with the cutoff date and all the excitement and the whirlwind that they'd just been hearing about from the emails they got on, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, if you just sent them a what just happened type email last Friday, then you wouldn't send one this Friday. You'd wait a couple more Fridays. And again, it can be kind of intuitive. If this is a relationship, you kind of know to stop repeating yourself. Like you don't keep bringing up the same thing over and over again, but you might bring it up a couple weeks from now or talk about it a little bit differently a couple weeks from now. Like it starts to become very natural. You're taking emails I'm giving you, but you're thinking about like, their experience and which ones you choose based on what's going on or what you previously sent. If you didn't have a whirlwind week, in other words, if you don't have a lot going on yet in your team line, so you didn't send a bunch of emails out Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, saying someone's jumping you and all this crazy stuff, then you wouldn't send out an email this Friday saying what just happened. <laughs> you choose the emails I give you on educating on the products or opportunity or they give depth to a, another related subject. I'm also giving you emails that you could choose from that focus on developing a relationship, either relationship between your upline, and if your upline is not using the system, then you can use me, uh, you know, or that's building a relationship between you and your list. And I'll show you examples of that. For those of you you want to, I talked about that earlier. Some of you won't want to do that. Some of you will want to rely on me and let me be the one who's building relationship with the list. You're sending everything, sending my content. That's fine. But there are big advantages long term in terms of how much money you make if you are building the relationship with the list. So we encourage it. But the point is, I'm also giving you emails that you could choose to send on Fridays that focuses on developing a relationship. And this can include some of those emails inspire them to make changes in their life or this is simply you or an upline informing them on a topic above. So uh, I'll show you some examples today of videos that people in our team have made that develop a relationship between me, them, and the list, and that uh, educate on the opportunity. I'll show you examples of that today. So on Fridays, you send one email only. You can do a plan double whammy. You're choosing from emails that I'm giving you in these different categories. Really, really simple, actually. Here's an example of somebody, Addison Williams, who's in our community, who created a video recently. In fact, it looks like he uploaded it today. That does exactly that. It educates on the opportunity, and it develops a relationship with him and his list. And if we go there really quick, one second here. I want you to listen to it so you kind of get the tone hey, of it. Everybody, it's Addison Williams. I do hope that you're having a great day. Let me turn that up. This afternoon, I wanted to go over what does it look like whenever we're talking about my daily choice and the opportunity that lies within it. So, and let me just fast forward a little bit. Where everything is coming from, bumped into that, and you. He's just talking about everything. Great job, Addison. This is an example of uh, a great uh, video you might link to in an email I give you under develop relationship that actually develops a relationship between Addison and his list, but also educates on the opportunity. So I'm giving you the emails that you're choosing from from these different categories. Saturday, so that was Friday. Now let's look at Saturday. You can send one to two emails on Saturday. Uh, if you sent two last Saturday, maybe you don't send two this Saturday. <laughs> like, it's not going to be a tragedy if you do, uh, but don't overthink it. One, I'm just saying Friday is really just one unless it's a planned double whammy situation, which is fairly rare. 
Saturdays you can send to. We're starting to build that momentum. It matters. You need to get their attention again before the start of the jumping and all that stuff sets in. This says use double whammy only if necessary. That means emergencies. So here you don't do a plan double whammy. Uh, Saturdays, you would only use a double whammy if you had to. And the only time you'd ever have to is like you made a mistake. Like you sent an email and your link was broken. Then don't sweat it. Go ahead and send an immediate follow-up saying, oops, broken link. I'll give you that email too. <laughs> a lot of these are similar to Friday. You get to choose from these different categories of emails I'm giving you. Now you know why it's taking me so long to give you all these emails. I'm going through hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of emails that I've sent in the last 90 days to my list to find the ones that have been most effective. And I'm organizing them into these structures to set up a training process that makes it absolutely impossible for you to fail. So the first group that you can choose from of emails, educate on products or opportunity. The second group that you could choose instead to send on Saturdays is give depth on another related subject like the CBD industry or um, a regulatory topic in network marketing, whatever, which, you know, again, I'm giving you all of this. Uh, a third type of email you could choose to send instead on Saturday develops a relationship either with your upline if you don't want to be making videos or with you if you want to step out and, and start doing videos. It will long term, long term make you a lot more money because your list will start to get to know you and uh, you'll be able to lead them in new and better ways as you start to make money. Um, you know, years from now, you know, 18 months from now, 24 months from now. So I encourage it, but you don't have to could completely leverage me and just have me building the relationship. Uh, and then I'm saying PS, prepare them for Thursday deadline, which is you know the cutoff date, midnight Pacific time. I say PS because uh, I'm gonna give you in the emails uh, a PS that you can add to any, so if you chose an email from the Educate on Products and Opportunity, or if you chose an email for Saturday that gives depth on another related subject, or if you chose an email from the Developer Relationship category, you add a PS on Saturday that prepares them for the Thursday deadline. You just tag that little PS to the bottom of the email that you chose. And I give you the PS that you would tag to whatever email you chose to send out. If you have a lot of action, Again, guys, I'm going to keep teaching this. I'm going to keep supporting you with this. Like, uh, this is the final stage for you guys to have complete control over what you earn and be on the leaderboard and, and have it become easy. So I don't. I ex expect it's going to require a little bit more reinforcement. Just remember, I'm giving you everything: the emails, the presentations, everything. So it's not going to be long before you learn this. You're climbing a wall, but you got a harness. You're safe. You can't lose. You can only win. You can only move up. It can't get any easier than this. I'm fulfilling every end of what I've committed to you guys. This is my grand opus, as some people might call it. I don't plan to build another network marketing opportunity. I want to break records, and that means it requires me to help lots of you break records. So in this, you're going to learn it if you stick around. It is not that hard. It, it, the, the PS that you would stick here, you would consider what I say below. If you have a lot of action, so I'm giving you two different PSs you'd put there that link to two different videos I give you. If you have a lot of action in your team line, you would focus on uh, the PS that I give you where people are following under them and what that means. And it would link to a video that explains all that. If you don't, if you're just getting your team line going and it's not real exciting yet, and you only got a few people in there, you know, maybe you've got 10 and only one or two coming in every few days. If that's where you're at with it uh, and you don't have a lot of action yet, then you would put the PS at the bottom of your email on Saturdays that focuses them on getting the jump on others. Because there's that aspect to it too, where if they sign up before Thursday, they get to jump everyone else above them in the, in the team line. So if there's a few people above them, that could be an incentive. Okay, I wanted to show you another example of somebody who is taking this one step further. Judith Shuttleworth made this video. She just posted it yesterday anyway. I just want to keep introducing this to you because even though it's not required, 
doing these things makes you so much more valuable. And I want you to understand how simple it can be. So let's look at her video really quick before we move on to the next uh, day. Hey there, I'm Judith Shabalos, and I am going to give you a quick look today behind the scenes at our game-changing system that we have for HempWorks and My Daily Choice. Now let's flash forward. These on when they so there's another example of developing a relationship in this case between her and at this and her list and at the same time educating on the opportunity. Let's look at Sunday, and again, if you don't wanna do that, you'll be using the videos that I have. Perfectly fine. Sunday, one to two emails. Use double whammy only if necessary. Only send one email on Sundays if you sent two on Friday or Saturday, unless it's an emergency. So in other words, like you a broken link or something, then it's okay. Again, you're just sending the emails I'm giving you from these categories. A lot of, you know, the same categories on Sunday. This is gonna get different though, as we move closer towards Thursday. So you're gonna choose one to two emails on Sunday that either from the category that I give you that educates on the products or opportunity, that gives depth on another related subject as we talked about before, or that develops a relationship either between you and your list as we showed you a couple examples like Addison and Judith are doing, or between me, if you don't want to do that, or your upline, if you'd like to borrow your upline, if they're active, you could do it with them as well. I'm giving you the emails to send out. It's just that the video you link into would uh, depend on who you're wanting to build a relationship with your list. And then at the bottom it says, uh, if there's any jumping activity on Sunday, if they have anyone that signed up underneath them, uh, you can also let them know of that. But we. I would encourage you to use the PS on Sunday for that, unless there's a lot of action. If there's a lot of action, you might go ahead and let them know on Sunday. So it depends which email you choose to send, depending on what's going on. This is how you trigger momentum by sending the right things. And then once you've triggered momentum, I'll be teaching you how to leverage that momentum to get it really going. For example, if a lot of people all of a sudden for the first time in your team line have signed up. You better leverage that because if you don't, you just lost a huge opportunity. If on Sunday for the first time in your career, you've got five people who came in either from enrollments you did or people in your group did or collectively, and you don't take the time to email your pre-enrollees, encourage your downline to email their pre-enrollees and leverage that on Sunday. I'm not saying you're not gonna get into momentum at some point, but you lost an opportunity to get into it a lot faster. So if you got a lot of action, you're gonna send an email on Sunday specific to the jumping activity. If they just have like one person or a little action, you'll go ahead and choose an email that I give you from these other categories, then you'll have a PS that notifies them of the little jumping activity going on on Sunday. Okay, so I've talked about, you know, some, one of those email categories is educating on the products. So what's that look like? Well, I saw this post uh, from Kevin underneath one of my videos on YouTube. Uh, and I think in my video I had mentioned, some of you might've heard it because I think I just made it, talking about the awesome results I got on the relief cream, the CBD em emu oil cream from HempWorks. And he goes, I have to admit, I thought the relief, he's talking about the relief product, was gonna be like some Bengay cream. That's a, a, a brand here popular in the US uh, or something. But once I tried it for muscle soreness, I couldn't believe it. It worked within minutes. I'm totally impressed. Got on auto order and started experiencing these products are amazing. Or he says, get on auto order. So, you know, by the way, that product, I just got excited about it a couple of days ago. I started putting it on my neck, helped me massively. My son came home from running, had really bad leg pain, uh, intensely so. I said, hey, try this. He's as skeptical as I am naturally, so it took a little nudge. He put it on, and within a minute, he's like, I can't believe this. This is crazy. It helped him tremendously. So this is what I mean. You know, When I see a comment like this, like this is something we might share in one of our emails that I give you. Like I'm, That's one piece to this. I'm adding in more and more layers as I get more and more experience with the products, because I'm only three months into this. I had great results on the CBD, but there's, such, there's a great product line here. And we're going to continue to weave that in. So when I talk about emails that educate on the products, it might be referencing something like that. And that does boost people's confidence in the opportunity. 
Okay, now let's look at Monday. We talked about Friday emails, Saturday emails, Sunday emails. We've talked about things that matter. You're choosing from emails I'm giving you, but what you send, depending on the circumstances, matters. It's something you will start to become very natural at, but in the beginning, it'll be paint by the numbers so you can't make a mistake. For those that joined us late, we're talking about exactly how to use the emails I'm gonna give you that you send to your pre-enrollees to duplicate the insane results that I've been getting. You're using the same emails I'm sending, the same everything, the same presentations. You can add in, you can pepper in, building your own relationship with your list, which I recommend. I've given you examples and I'll show you a few more, but you don't have to. You could have the relationship when you're sending emails from the category of developing a relationship, you could that be between your upline or me and your list if you prefer. It's just long-term, you'll make 10 times more money long-term because you'll be able to become a leader in their eyes uh, and in your own right uh, if you develop that relationship. If not, you'll kind of get capped at a certain income level. You'll still do well, but you'll get capped at a certain income level because you won't be able to, you'll kind of always be lurking in the shadows. So Monday, you can send one to two emails. You would send at least two, or I would say you definitely would send two if you're notifying them of specific jumping activity and it's kind of exciting. If that's not going on, then you might just send one. Monday has an occasional planned double whammy to grab their attention. Why? Because we're heading closer to Thursday, the deadline. And even if no one's jumping them, that Thursday deadline is still relevant because they can jump ahead of other people that are slower movers, which they'll become more and more familiar with uh, the importance of that deadline date as we're sending these emails out. So we want to grab their attention. So occasionally, about once every three Mondays, you'll send out a double whammy that is where you choose one of the emails I give you uh, that's designed for this. And then uh, two minutes later, you send them another one that says, oops, I forgot something. And whenever you do a planned double whammy, that subject line can't be exactly like the last planned double whammy. It's weird. So those are the things I'm teaching you. And that's in this document as well. And constantly helping you break out of being a robot and, and, and starting to treat this as relationship building. So again, Monday, very similar in terms of the categories you get to choose from, some of the same categories. You're educating on products or opportunity. You're giving depth on another related subject, choosing from the emails I'm giving you. You're developing a relationship either between you and your list or your upline or me and your list. Uh, these are all emails, your categories you're choosing from just like the other days. Uh, the difference here is if you're starting to get some momentum or if you're in a team line you know, where your upline spillover has signed some people up, you want to notify your pre-enrollees in that line about that jumping activity. So you get to choose from emails that I'm giving you that do that. If you have a lot of action, you're going to focus on, in on who's falling under them and what that means and link into a video that I give you that explains all of that. If you don't have a lot of action, uh, then you're going to focus more on them getting jumped or sorry, them being able to jump others before that deadline. And, if you, if you don't have a lot of action, this would be a PS. If you do have a lot of action, one of your emails on Monday would be about the jump, you know, people trying to jump them. You're just choosing from email, you know, you're choosing from the emails I've given you that notify of that. Uh, and then you might send a second email from one of these other categories. Now, if you've got a lot of jumping going on, then maybe both your emails are just about the jumping. Uh, and again, you're choosing from the emails I'm giving you, but it's relevant to what's happening specific to them. There's not a lot of action underneath them. You're obviously not going to make a big, choose an email that makes a big deal about people jumping them and educating them on that yet. It might just be a little PS and it's going to focus more on if they were to enroll before Thursday, they would get to jump the pre-enrollees and it would link into a video that educates them on why that's compelling but then you'd still focus on sending an email from one of these other categories and that would just be a PS. But again, if there's a lot of activity going on, you might send two emails out that day, your two emails specific choosing from the jumping situation. Okay, coming back to what it looks like to build a relationship with your list. If you guys choose this, I wanna keep showing you examples of it. Paula did a great job here. This is specific though to something else. This is specific 
uh, to giving depth on another related subject. So let's see how she did that. How did she say that's also building a relationship. Let's see how she did that. The, the title of this video is lead magnets that build an email list. Now Paula is in our ambassador program where we do a lot more coaching around how to create content like this. So those of you in profit platform or the ambassador program, which we call our pro level, you can go deeper into this. It's not a requirement. Others of you can just kind of watch this and, and glean from it. It's not something you have to do, but I want to show you these examples. Cause again, those of you that are doing this here early are going to end up making insane amounts of money later because you're going to become leaders whether you look at yourself that way now or not, some of you do and some of you might not yet, you will become a leader who makes an insane amount of money in this company if you're building a relationship with your list and doing these things. So I just wanna introduce it to you. You'll still do well if you don't, but you'll be capped at a certain point. You know, when I'm off, you know, three years from now, when I'm on an island uh, drinking my coconuts, um, I'm not gonna be the one responsible for inspiring your team at that point. I'll have the basic things set up to maintain the structure, but if you're making money, it's gonna be my, you know, let's say you're making 3,000 a month even, I'm gonna be expecting you to come out of the shadows if you wanna make a lot more. I'll set up a basic infrastructure and uh, your people that are coming in underneath, you can plug into that and you can attract top leaders that way, but if you wanna ensure that you're taking complete control over making, you know, maxing this opportunity out, then you building a relationship with your list is gonna give you the opportunity to do that. Here's what that might look like. Now, you know you need to build an email list for your business, and if you're watching this video, that's what you wanna do. And you've probably heard what a lead magnet is, or you've probably heard the term somewhere along the way come to you with a phone call or an email. So it doesn't even matter if the people on her list end up watching the whole thing, it's irrelevant. What this does is it shows them that she's a leader, that she is not hiding in the shadows, and it increases uh, the perceived value of everything that she offers. She's not just promoting something, and it makes them much more receptive to her future emails and recommendations. Let's look at Tuesday's emails. Again, a lot of similarities. You get to choose from a lot of the same categories, but we're getting closer and closer to the Thursday deadline. And so a bigger emphasis is made, particularly if upline have signed people up underneath you. And uh, uh, one second, guys, I gotta check something really quick. My apologies. Okay, so as we get closer to that Thursday deadline, if there is activity, that becomes the emphasis. So Tuesday, you can send one to three or more emails depending on how much activity. The more activity underneath them, the more new people enrolling, obviously, the more you can send to notify them of that. And you're choosing from emails under notify of specific jumping activity that I give you when that's happening. If you don't have that much activity or any activity, it's a little bit different what emails you're choosing. Then you're choosing from the emails I give you that educate on products or opportunity or that give depth on another related subject or that develop a relationship either between you or your upline or me in your list. And then if there isn't much going on, you would put in the PS something about the Thursday deadline that links into a video that I give you. If there's a lot going on, you might send a lot of emails that you're choosing from the emails I give you in that category that uh, tell them what's going on. You're just choosing the emails that I give you. Now let's look at one more final video that shows you, and then we'll move on to the other days. I just wanna weave these in for you guys to get how easy this can be. That shows how Michael Hanley is building a relationship with his list. Aloha everyone, Michael Hanley here from michaelhanley.com and Predictable Business Systems with Michael. And in this video tonight, I'm going to share with you how you can duplicate the incredible results that our team leader, Mike Klingler, is getting in our HempWorks My Daily Choice power line. Now, you'll notice he put in his headline, Duplicate Mike Klingler's Incredible, incredible Record-Breaking Results with HempWorks My Daily Choice. He's also an ambassador program uh, student, so he knows a lot of these little, uh, little tricks that I'm going to share with you right now. By putting my name in this 
and also Hemp Works in My Daily Choice in the title. You can see he got 209 views. Um, you can kind of pick up people that might be searching for me. And while you, you don't need to make a ton of videos to do that, you should have at least one out there that does that if you want to kind of siphon some of my uh, traffic, which is perfectly fine by me. Um, but yeah, so here's another example. You'll notice he's not in the video. Um, some I'm not showing everyone who's done this. I've shared them in the community. Uh, Michael Todd has done a, uh, and I always get confused because he also goes by Todd Minter, and I got to ask you uh, which you go by. I think I did, and you told me. But anyway, Michael Todd made a great video where he's actually in the video, like Judith did, like I showed you earlier. You can do both. You can be in the video or just showing your screen like this. You could just be showing a website if you want to. Uh, kind of like uh, Addison did more of that the one at first one I showed you or you can make PowerPoint slides if that's something you want to get into but doing this is building a relationship with your list not a requirement but long term a lot more money now let's look at Wednesday's emails you can send one to three or more because we're getting really close to that deadline so you send a lot of them if there is a lot of action whether you're bringing those people in, whether you're signing them up or your upline spillover is signing them up, they're under your pre-enrollee and you can leverage it all the same. Like right now, for example, there's a whole bunch of, you know, there's a handful of people that are signing up in both my legs, my left and my right legs. So most of you listening right now that are in my organization, if you have any pre-enrollees in those legs, they have someone that's gonna jump them. And so you can be sending a lot of emails to those pre-enrollees about that and you'll be able to select from the emails I give you in the category notify a specific jumping activity. Again, if there's a lot going on, you might send up to three, and if there's really a lot going on, even more than three emails on Wednesday. Exactly how many you send is something that's kind of, you gotta figure out and you're gonna learn with me as we go forward. So this is an occasional plan, double whammy, attention grabber, which we talked about already. If there's a lot of jumping activity, it may call for a lot of emails. Again, if there's not a lot going on, you're gonna send emails from the category that educate on the products or opportunity. You're building up momentum early on. If you don't have a lot going on yet, you're in the pre-momentum phase. We all have to move through that phase. It's a little, um, it's a nail biter because you're like, you want it to happen. You're not sure how to make it happen. And I'm telling you, if you follow this process, you keep getting more and more pre-enrollees, you keep sending these emails, it's going to happen. It starts to get triggered. But then when somebody signs up, you better do what I'm teaching you here. And then you jump to notify them of specific jumping activity. Like you need to leverage everything. So again, on Wednesday, if there's not a lot going on, you choose from educate on products or opportunity category and email one of those out, or you give depth on it. You choose one that gives depth on another related subject, or you choose one that develops a relationship either between me and your list or you and the list, as I showed you others are doing. Uh, or if some, there's jumping activity, which I, for many of you there is, if you're in, if you put any pre-enrollees at all into either of the strong legs I'm building, which a lot of you have, you have people being jumped. Are you notifying them of specific jumping activity? Are you following this, you know, precisely? Now I haven't given you all the emails. I've only given you a small handful of them. I'm still organizing all this, but this is what's coming, and this is how you're going to use them to ensure your success, to ensure you're duplicating what I do to get the conversions, to start getting into momentum. And once again, if you have a lot of action, you're going to send from the category of emails that focus on who's falling under uh, under them and what it means. If you don't have a lot of action, you're going to put in a PS something that educates them about the Thursday deadline. Uh, and I give that PS to you. You'll tag it onto one of those other emails so that they might be encouraged and incentivized to jump pre-enrollees above them. Let's look at Thursday. Thursday, you're gonna send two to five emails. So I would recommend sending two emails on Thursday, even if you don't have a lot going on. This is like, you know, the, the pinnacle of the week. Remember Friday, it calms down. This is all by design. Two to five. Two, if not much is going on yet, you're still looking to build momentum, you're looking for the fire starter. Five, if there's a lot going on. And remember, if your upline's bringing people in, you gotta pay attention because that counts. Because even if you didn't bring those people in that are under your pre-enrollees, it counts. That would be just as exciting as if you were bringing them in from your pre-enrollees perspective. So Thursday's a lot of emails occasional plan double whammy attention grabber obviously you wouldn't do a double whammy today if you did one the previous day 
But if you haven't done one for a while, it might be a good time to do one. If there's a lot of jumping activity, it may call for a lot of emails. You got these same categories. You're choosing from the emails that I give you that educate on the products or opportunity, where you're choosing from the emails that give depth. And, and by the way, on Thursday, you might send one, or even if you have a lot of jumping activity, you might send a few of these type of emails in addition to a couple emails that just talk about the jumping. One that develops the relationship. You wouldn't send, you know, on, on Thursday and probably not even on Wednesday, you wouldn't send something that's head heavy. Like you wouldn't send something like the one we just saw from, uh, uh, I forgot which one that was. Uh, Paula, yeah, this one on build your email list, it's a great piece. This would be great for Friday or Saturday. You wouldn't send one like this because it's not specific enough to what's going on right now at this climax of the week. You would send something like this on a Friday or Saturday. So that's important to understand. If you're sending something that develops a relationship, it better be really specific to like what's happening right now, like maybe a video you did. If it's you building the relationship, it would be linking to a video that you did talking about you know, what it means to have people jumping them. Or you'd be linking to a video I did that talks about people jumping them, a video that I give you um, to upload to your YouTube channel or to a marketing funnel page. Uh, it, again, if you're sending something that develops a relationship, it would be specific to what's going on right now that's exciting. Uh, so again, kind of similar, but again, there's these nuances. Sorry, that's, that's Wednesday. Thursday, you wouldn't send anything head heavy. You'd be all really specific to the excitement of the moment. You're choosing from the emails that I've given you, so you can't mess up unless you're not following what I'm sharing with you. Like for example, if on Thursday you send a head heavy thing, you know, that's a mistake. It's not like gonna kill your business, but if you keep doing those kinds of things and you're not getting the strategy and not following this, it's gonna be harder to get momentum. If you send the emails that I give you and you put the strategy and thought into it and you're sensitive to what they're experiencing and what's going on right now, then you're gonna do phenomenally well. And while it takes time to get that initial momentum going, uh, you're going to get it going if you follow what I give you. And once you get someone enrolling, if you then leverage that by sending the notify of specific jumping activity, then you're going to trigger more action. Maybe not this week, maybe not next week, but the next time it happens, it starts to trigger. And then, you, and then you're going to have a week. At some point, you're going to have a week where a whole bunch of people are coming in and you're going to leverage that. And now you've got a bunch of people duplicating the process. So now you've got three, four, five times the marketing power. For example, somebody um, is enrolling today um under uh someone else in the team under deborah cox uh, who's coming in at executive and this is i think her first person in her week leg coming in at executive and he's planning to put 300 dollars a month into marketing as a minimum that significantly boosts the growth of her leg already and then as, it doesn't take long to get into momentum guys if you understand how it works Remember then after Thursday, we had that big climax, the big excitement. Now Friday, one email only, I already talked about it, is where we calm things down. Strategy is everything. To create momentum, leverage everything. Let me give you an example. So this is some, another aspect to what I'm going to be teaching you and continually reinforcing with you as you're sending these emails I'm giving you. Here's a real example. Today I got somebody who signed up at 100 BV, so at the director level. It was an auto enroll, didn't talk to him. Just got the notification because I'm following this process. When that happens, you should send an email to that person. This is what we mean by leverage everything and strategy. If you want things to happen faster, this is the kind of stuff you've got to do. You've got to leverage the moment as best you can. I know some of you are working and stuff. You need to pay attention to when you get a notification. Now, all you got to do is fire off an email. It's already written for you. It doesn't take that long. You do it as soon as you can. You don't sweat it if you screw up and didn't see it till the next day. You just roll with it. You do the best you can to be responsive to the moment. Today, I got somebody who enrolled a director on their own, didn't talk to them or anything, got the notification. I haven't been able to do this yet because I also am busy. So it's not like you always get to leverage everything. Don't cry over it. I will send this email as soon as I can, but ideally, you're gonna to wanna to send that email as quickly as possible that encourages them to upgrade. And I give you that email. 
tells them why they might want to upgrade to executive right now. You email then your pre-enrollees telling them that somebody's jumping them by Thursday. And you're as specific as you can in the email. So I'm going to give you an email you can send that's generic if you don't have time to think. But I'm also going to set it up so that you know how to easily make it specific so you can use the person's name who signed up underneath them and make it real and talk about what level they came at. And if you know, if you happen to have any exchange with them and you know how much they're going to be spending on marketing and stuff, you would say that. So for example, Deborah today who got the executive, she wants to now email. And Deborah, if you're listening, you want to email your pre-enrollees ASAP and talk about Bob and talk about the conversation with Bob, just briefly, that you got this great uh, new enrollment coming in to duplicate the system, has a lot of experience from the olden days, and is excited about the prospects of what he sees he can do with this. And he's committing at least, as a minimum, $300 a month into marketing. You're a pre-enrollee with a free position right now, but you know Thursday, Bob's gonna jump above you. You don't wanna lose that opportunity, you're gonna explain. So do your best to do that right now, but under, uh, Deborah, you wanna leverage that, you wanna leverage everything. Now, those are the kinds of emails I'm organizing and giving to you guys for every situation to duplicate what I do, to get that momentum. An email like that, that's how I got 214 enrollments my first month, that's how I got 50 enrollments last month. And then you would email any team members above you that are already in. So for example, uh, Bob signing up today underneath Deborah in her weak leg. Uh, as more people come in underneath Bob from my or uplines or Deborah's efforts, she would want to email Bob and anyone else to let them know of that as well and to encourage them to create even faster growth and momentum and to encourage them to contact their pre enrollees in that way. And again, you're going to be able to just refer to this document so they know what emails to send to get even more leverage. Leverage everything. Communicate with what's going on to your team. Uh, Stephen is a, a lead that wrote me today out of the blue. I haven't uh, heard from Stephen before. Uh, he says, hi, Mike. I tried to call you, but your voicemail is full. So he probably became a pre-enrollee and saw my phone number in there. And I don't take calls uh, that I don't know about ever anymore. It's not possible. So, you know, yeah, my voicemail is full and probably will be forever. I tried to call you, but your voicemail is full. So I am writing to you about your business. I would like to know how you're doing and, uh, and do and find that when they, the company said you have many pre-enrollees and a couple of paid affiliates under you, was that the way it played out for you? So he's really trying to figure out like, is it as exciting and real as it seems? Call me anytime he gave his phone number and I replied and asked him a few questions. Uh, you're gonna start when you start to follow the strategy that I'm giving you and the emails I'm giving you to send, you're gonna start to get emails like this. How do you respond? Well, this is where a little bit more nuanced training and coaching comes in. And you know, we're gonna set up lots of calls once I get this framework in place, which we're really close to, guys. Obviously, it's a huge amount of work on my end that you'll never have to do. Uh, once you have all of this, these emails, we'll be constantly doing training and reinforcing what I just went over. And I'll be looking at what you're doing if you're not getting results, or if you only have five or six pre enrollees and you're wondering what to do next, we'll be talking about it. I'll tell you exactly what to do. That's where we're going next. Uh, you're gonna start to get emails like this from prospects. How do you respond? I'll show you how to respond. I'll give you a lot of examples of emails like this I received from prospects, and I'll show you my responses. And you'll kind of be able to just pick from one and maybe adapt it slightly to the specific question, but there's not that many different types of questions a prospect can ask. And there's really not that many, there's not much of a difference be, with what your next step is. And you'll see that in this document as well. So you'll know how to respond to the prospects who are emailing you like this that you're, uh, that you're drawing out and attracting out. Leverage everything. Another example, uh, Michelle wrote, uh, Mike, my first day was March 7th, and I have three pre-enrollees. Pre I talked about this earlier. And I said, Michelle, uh, I said, you should do a training video showing exactly what email you're sending, what LCP you're linking to, what time of day you sent these. And then she could put her links underneath that video posted on YouTube. Again, this is for those of you who want to 
build a relationship with your list. Don't have to, but if you want to take an extra step to be able to really blow up how much money you make long term by moving into a leadership role with your list, that's something that she could do. Leverage everything is my point. Doesn't necessarily have to be making your own videos, but the point is whenever something happens, someone signs up, whatever, I'm always looking at how can I take this and really quickly turn it into more? You might ask, what about using auto emails, Mike? Can't we just set it up where the leads go into my system and we just let the emails take care of the work? Yes, you should use auto emails. You can and should, but this is a secondary thing to building relationships. And we are going to teach you how to do auto emails for those that don't know. No, but what I'm teaching you here first is way more important. It's specific to the circumstances of what's going on. If you want to have high leverage and being able to build relationships with large numbers of people, if you want to stand out from the noise out there and really, really take control of your success with this and duplicate what I'm doing, you don't just want to rely on auto emails. Those of you who have our funnels have auto emails. For example, when people request uh, the video be emailed to them. They go into an auto email system. They start getting auto emails. We have those working in the background and there'll be other pages that we're adding and we'll be testing with you that have put them into an auto email campaign. That's awesome. That will be going on in the background. But what I'm sharing with you now, what I'll focus my training and support on and the way that you duplicate what I, uh, the results that I get in terms of high percentage of conversions that's not automation. That's not canned. That's not contrived. It's unique to what's happening in the team line right now. And that's what makes it so powerful. And since I'm giving you those emails, I'm going to be supporting you with what I covered today ongoingly so you know exactly how to implement what I shared today, which is all very easy to do. There's just no way that you can't succeed with it. You're building relationships via high leverage. That requires sending specific emails on specific days, specific to circumstances. Now the question, what is the best tool to load emails into? We'll get to that. I'm not quite there yet. I can only cover so much ground at once. What I'm focused on right now matters most. I'll talk about what you should be doing now. If you don't know how to do that, you could ask around the community, but you know, mainly it probably, if you don't know how to, what to do with that, if you don't know how to load leads into a email system, you should probably just be patient and focus on other things right now. Focus on what we're giving you to do and wait till we get to that or you'll overwhelm yourself. If you know what to do or you can ask around and that feels like a natural next step, then go ahead and go for it. But it's not a requirement uh, for most of you at this point. What if I have an old list of my own and you want to email them? We'll get to that too. It's just not a priority yet, but I will get to that about emails that you can send. In the meantime, if you want to get going with it, look over the emails I've already given you in the document that we send to the one cent leads. Look over the emails I'm going to add that I talked about today that go out to pre-enrollees and you can modify those and send them to an old list. If you need additional help, I'm gonna come in and do lots of interactive calls with you guys and help you with that stuff. It's coming. But I focused on this first, because this is gonna be a huge, huge next explosion for us. What should I be doing? What's next? Well, get very familiar with this document. This is the document that I shared the other day that gives you the emails that you can send to your one cent leads or that you could even modify to send to pre-enrollees. And right now I'm adding next the emails to send to pre-enrollees. So the first cat, if you look right here, it says three categories of emails for prospects in this document. The first one that there's a lot of them in here already for this. The first category is to send to leads like before they're pre-enrollees. So this is pretty stuffed with those now and we're getting great results. We'll continue adding new ones to it. We'll continue listening to uh, the community about which ones are getting the best results and update the document. But uh, we're rocking and rolling in that department. The next ones that I'm adding that I went over today is the emails that you send to pre-enrollees. Now I've shared a lot of them with you, but as you can see, it's a pretty complex process of me going through all these different emails, finding the ones that got the highest result for me, and then putting those in an organized fashion, as I discussed today, into the document. So you know, so there's a little bit of guidance in the document that reinforces what I shared today in terms of when you send which ones. So that's coming next on this document. And then the last stage of emails is, what do you send to new pre-enrollee, uh, the people who sign up? And then that's it, guys. And then we're just doing interactive calls 
sh and I'm looking over your shoulder, or looking over what you're sending out and looking at the situation, seeing if you're doing it right. And it's, it's not rocket science. What else could you be doing now? Well, get your funnel set up. For example, this funnel, you could be making sure your link is in here. Uh, that's step th three and four. Uh, go through the steps. Step one, get the one cent lead. Step two, start emailing the leads. We show you how in step two. Step three, and step four, get your funnel set up. Uh, what's next? If you're in level two or level three, we're going to scale all of this, but I need, we needed to move through this stage first. And this next step is me getting you all of the pre-enrollee emails that you send to pre-enrollees in an organized fashion so you can easily see when you send what, et cetera, all the stuff I talked about today. That's next. Uh, and then adding the emails you send to people who enrolled, that's a lot easier. And then, uh, and then we're doing interactive calls all the time. I start doing webinars that you can, I'm gonna be giving you emails to refer your pre-enrollees pre -enrollees into. Uh, I should mention one other thing. I'm also gonna give you guys the option, if you really wanna lean on me to build a, re you know, so if, if you don't wanna be the one who builds the relationship with your list and you really wanna leverage me to get more enrollments and signups and get it really going, where as if I'm their upline, but only you're getting to make most of the money. If you, whether you want to do that or you also want to play around with, or even jump into building a relationship with your list. And on top of it, you want to leverage me fully. This will be optional, but uh, I'm going to be giving you guys a way where uh, I can be emailing your pre-enrollees on top of what you're doing. So if you're busy or whatever, maybe you're not keeping up with emailing them with everything, I'm going to be able to send a system email out and I won't be putting any links or anything into it, obviously. It's just going to be getting them excited and referring them to your email. So you're still going to want to be emailing them, but it will be an extra. So that'll be optional, but I'll talk about that as soon as we get this pre-enrollee emails out. And then I'm going to start doing webinars. And that's another thing that could really help blast off because maybe you don't, you know, I'll be promoting the webinars to them. Uh, or you can just send those emails to your pre-enrollees, but it would just be an extra like fuel if you want to tap into that. So what should you be doing? Get pre-enrollees, email the pre-enrollees, and then plug your enrollments into the same process. Duplication, guys. It's just, I'm making this easier and easier and easier every day until it's going to be so ridiculously easy, it's silly. Remember, level one gets to do things like solo ads. That's what we're doing right now. If you're in level one, you only get one list building process because it's assumed if you're in level one, you can't handle much more. You can't handle much cost. If you're in level one. You might not even be able to handle much thinking about all of this. We need to keep it super simple for level ones. So there'll always be one lead source. And right now that's the one cent leads that's still getting phenomenal results as a community for the cost and the simplicity. Absolutely amazing. So we're going to stick with that until it doesn't. But then we just switch to another one if it ever were to change. You can also go into the other upline groups. Listen carefully. You can go into the other upline groups, which in the announcement post in the level one Facebook group, we introduce you to three different upline groups and they give you scripts and posts and their training that you can post to Facebook so you can grow that way as well. And then uh, you can also be taking my videos and uploading them to YouTube and putting your links below. And the more you do those, the more traction you get. You could even, if you want to build a relationship with your list, you could even be making videos like I showed you today. If you're not ready for that, you could just be taking my videos and we have training on that inside the free training area. Level one has lots of things that they could be doing to be building their list. Beyond this, uh, if you've maxed these things out, you know, then it's warm market or it's upgrading to level two if you wanna move into the more aggressive strategies. Level two has everything level one has, but we, as soon as these pre-enrollees roll out, we're moving into the advertising, YouTube ads, other lists that you can scale more. With the one cent leads, you can't get more than 200 leads a day but there'll be other lead sources that we're testing as a community with level two where you can really scale up. Uh, and then of course, advertising as well. And obviously this benefits people in level one as well, because you got your upline creating spillover underneath you. Um, there's, you know, so everyone benefits in the community, but obviously if you want to tap into these things, uh, you need to be in level two for the, I call them guerrilla online marketing strategies. Those of you in level three, as soon as you see us move through those two pay phases, 
we're turning on the predictive predictable cash flow formula. Everyone will know in the community when we did that, because there's going to be this massive, ridiculous surge. And this is when I really consider that we've started marketing from my perspective. This is how I'm getting to uh, a million a month in both legs and revenue. It's going to benefit everybody. I only have two legs. So a lot of that spillover has to end up underneath you guys. And the more successful your, your uplines are, the more spillover they put into their downlines. Like it's going to be a huge, huge surge when we do this. Before we get here, we've got it. You know, I've got to get this clean release organized. Uh, I'm any day away from it, I just went over what the strategy will be, and then we'll continue to reinforce the strategy I went over today. So you're sending the right emails at the right time and building that relationship with the list and getting those conversions. Uh, once that's out and we're doing the regular interactive sessions where I'm working with you guys regularly and looking over your shoulder and seeing exactly what's going on, telling you exactly what needs to be done to, to get the momentum going. Uh, then I'm also doing webinars. We'll plug in the webinars on a regular basis for your pre-enrollees. I'll start emailing your pre-enrollees to, to, to give another layer of excitement. And so I can be building a relationship with them as well. So they're getting the sense that they're building a relationship with me. That will attract even more of them on board. Or you can send those emails out. If you don't want to give me their emails, you'll have the option of both. Uh, so we're going to really we're going to, you know, we're going to turn on the level two stuff and then we're going to move right into level three. And that's when we're really, it's on and it's going to be insane. If we didn't have the foundation set first, it would just be a mess. We would lose so much of that action. But because the foundation set, it's going to be like, it can be crazy. I mean, basically, I don't know if I got the biggest record in the company, but I was certainly close when I came in in December and got 214 enrollments. And I know that that I kind of blew a lot of people's minds in the company. And then I've kind of backed off marketing as I'm putting all this together. Uh, when we turn that on, what I just described, which is what this is all being built to do, uh, it's going to blow people's minds. Level one must uh, come in a director, be it 40 BV a month auto order. If you get off of that, you get booted from the group. And if it keeps happening, like we might not let a person back in because it's just too much hassle from an administrative place. We need to have high standards and then we're really not asking for much for what we're given. So make sure you pass that on to your teams. Level two needs to be at executive and stay at executive, which requires being at 90 BV. You might just want to get the director pack because that gets you more products to have an experience with. Um, and test out if you get the director pack and you can change those out. Um, that's 100 BV. Uh, but if you, if you want to cut the cost down, you could cut it right down and choose a uh, lot less products for 90 BV on auto order. Just make sure if you want to stay in level two, you got to be there. If you get kicked out of level two, you got to buy an executive pack again to get back in level two. We're going to be strict about this, not because of any other reason other than it's going to create more successes with you guys and the people you bring in, plain and simple. And level three, that's for those in Profit Platform in the Ambassador Program. That's the cash flow formula. Takes more to set that up, but that's the insane leverage. We suggest if you're in level one, consider level two, if you, but start in level one. If you're in level two now, ace everything I'm sharing with you now. We'll be moving on to level two strategies very, very quickly. Uh, don't be in a hurry to jump into level three unless you have the resources, you know, unless you're not stressed out financially. If you're stressed out financially, uh, you should, shouldn't move above level two right now. Okay, so auto order, if you don't know how to do it, I just uploaded a YouTube video. Make sure you upload that YouTube video to your YouTube channel so you can refer your enrollments into there if they're asking, how do I set up auto order? And just remember to stay in the level one, level two, and level three groups. You need to be contributing as well. You need to be doing your best to bring in pre-enrollees right now. That's the one cent leads. And anything additionally you can drum up right now, if that's all you're doing, that's contributing, that's cool, but don't be doing nothing. Doing nothing is not what we want here. We're giving a lot. We expect everyone to do that minimum commitment they promised to stay in the group. Here's how simple this is, guys, and it's just gonna get simpler and simpler. Get pre-enrollees, email your pre-enrollees, plug your new enrollments into the same process for massive duplication. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and close this out, and then I'm going to post another link in about five minutes for those that want to join me for a Q&A. Uh, I want to make it separate from this call because I'm going to share this one. We want to keep it kind of buttoned up. But those that want to say hi or you have questions, you want to strategize, I'm going to send a link in the level one group, the level two group, and the level three group. Don't share it with anybody, and I'll see you guys in about five minutes for those that want to connect with me. 
All right, I'll see you soon. Okay, guys, if you found that helpful and you believe that we'd be a great uh, business partnership with you, please see the link down below so you can learn more about it and how we can help you. And hopefully you took uh, some great notes there from what Mike shared. Uh, we look forward to connecting. And uh, until next time, take care and let's connect now.